Hey, it's Drybear. We're continuing our guide series of covering every single weapon in Wild Hearts, and today we're going to be talking about the Nodachi, which if you're a fan of large chunks of metal being swung around slowly, but with heavy crater impacts at the end, then it's definitely the weapon for you. We'll talk about the basic mechanics of the weapon, how to weave all those mechanics together and what to look out for, plus some tips and tricks and combos that you can use to be successful in your hunts. If you found value in this video, leave a like down below. It helps me out tremendously. I can't even tell you how much. And subscribe for more gaming content. And as always, if you have any questions or comments for me, feel free to drop by my live stream. I'm live every single day. You can come by and hang out at twitch.tv forward slash drybear. Let's start talking about the Nodachi. So it is a weapon that is absolutely massive. The one that's on my back is actually one of the smaller versions of it based on what you craft. But in general, they're big hunks of metal. The only weapon that's really bigger than it is the Juggernaut transformation for the staff. So you have this big old sword that's slow and hits and hits. And you have to kind of wield it around. And as you drag it behind you, it's a big old hunk of metal. It's super fun. So as a quick tip, if you are ever wanting to play a new weapon, you can always walk up to a training dummy at the training bear. Activate train. You can go to this menu. And if you turn on attack tutorials, It'll teach you all the, the combos and mechanics of a weapon step by step if you're interested in learning that. And these bears exist in many places. There's one in Minato in the bottom. And there's one in the first map uh, here down at the bottom as well uh, in the first spawn zone. Or you can spawn it anywhere you want with Dragon Karakuri once you've unlocked it in your tree. So let's talk about the Nodachi. It is one of the starter weapons, one of the weapons you can pick before Chapter 2. Um, and it is pretty straightforward. It actually has one of the smaller movesets in the game. But it doesn't mean that it doesn't have so much subtlety and oomph to it. And when you land everything right, it feels really good. So we'll talk about this from the perspective of PlayStation buttons, uh, you know, square, triangle, that sort of thing. But keep in mind that on any platform, the, the inputs are the same. Uh, it is going to be a attack one, an attack two, and a special. On PlayStation, that's attack one is square, attack two is triangle, and then the R2 button, your trigger, is going to be your special. On Xbox, that is X, Y, and right trigger, and there's setup for the PC as well. So let's talk about the basics for the Nodachi. You have your attack one combo. At base, it is a two hit, so you can activate it. It'll hit this, and then you'll be able to hit that and follow up, and you can just go and you just keep training it uh, into that. So the first two hits, and then you follow up again into a third. So it's three hits. There's the th third hit on that follow there, and if you keep spamming, it won't continue. So your basic Attack one is a three hit combo. It looks like this and you'll attack and you'll deal damage. So that is that. You can also get some mobility with your attack two, uh, which is the direction that you're running with your analog or with your WASD will, it'll kind of do in a little attack in that direction. So that's your attack two. It's very slow, has a long recovery, but it will do a little bit of a whip and then you'll kind of roll in that direction. But again, I can be facing forward and then I can roll backwards. Uh, or I can even like face nowhere, like don't touch anything and it'll go backwards by default. I can do, do it to the side. I can do it to the other side. So it kind of allows you to reposition while also keeping the offense up at the same time. And that's all of the basic moves for the Nodachi. Pretty simple, right? Well, let's add into it the special. And that is your EA stance, your charge. You can make your weapon stronger. So at base, when you hit and hold your special, you'll start to charge the weapon up. And you'll see the blue bar in the bottom left filling up. And once it's full, you can do these crazy follow-up releases that do big, fat damage numbers. Uh, and, and you'll have this big AOE that hits it as well. There are different charge states as well. You don't have to always go to the end. You can do an early charge state, which does this side swipe. So if you get any amount of charge on it and you release, it'll do this big side swipe, which you can combo alpha of as well. Uh, it does a little bit more than a normal hit. So kind of hit that there. And then you can do some follow-ups for damage as well. Uh, if you let it glow and then it, it hits a new charge state, you'll get e some even higher and upward attack that does more damage than the first. Uh, so you can see how this like basic one with no charge does 368 to the bear. If I charge until it flashes once right there and then I release, it'll do about 1,046 with my weapon. Uh, so you get an extra damage there. And then if you let it charge up all the way, which takes a while if you have no charge active, uh, and you release it, you'll do a, a swipe first, and then you'll do the big slam after the big damage comes from the hit, but the release on it is there. 
And if you just started out playing the Dodachi, you probably play this way, and it probably will turn you away from the weapon, because honestly, this doesn't really, it, it, it doesn't feel as good as some of the other weapons. But this is not the end for the Dodachi. If, you, if you've been playing it this way, where you walk forward and you hit it, and then you just stand still and try and do this charge, you'll notice that if you charge and you stand still, it's, it'll, you'll turn and lean into it, and it'll charge faster. So you kind of have that option there. But this is where the flexibility comes in. While you are charging, you are free to move about the cabin. So you can walk around. The charge won't be as fast as when you're standing still, but you can hold this. It'll slowly drain your stamina and slowly fill the bar. So you can move around, dodge the monster, uh, get into position when it tinks, then you get the upward swing into the big slam. You can do that combo as well. Also, while you're charging, you can dodge. It will, as long as you're holding down your special, it will maintain that charge. However, if you ever run out of stamina, you will hit this like recoil. If you hit zero stamina while charging, it'll hit a recoil, it'll bounce you backwards. You never want to let it hit zero. If you see the red stamina there and it's about to end, I would just release at whatever charge level you have because it's better than just hitting that recoil, doing no damage and knocking yourself down. So that, that, that obviously extends the move set, right? Rather than just standing still and doing this, now all of a sudden we can move if we have to, we can stand still and charge. If we're about to get hit, we can dodge, stand still and charge, 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 lean towards the monster, and then go for the big follow-up. So that obviously makes it a lot more reasonable as a weapon because you can have that movement. However, it gets better because not only can you move and roll in this state, but you can also attack. So when you attack while holding down the charge, you'll see how the charge stays on my weapon. So while I'm holding uh, the special down and I attack, it, it keeps going up while I'm doing this. So I can actually, rather than just walking up to the monster and hitting them with my basic combos, I can start by charging. So you can do this, light attack or attack one, heavy attack, do these hits here, but you get no charge for doing so. So you may as well start the charge, go to the target and then start hitting. And you'll notice that if you uh, hold it down the whole time, not only are you, uh, your bar is going up the whole time, if you land a strike successfully while you're charging, it will add to your meter as well. And if you hit three of these in a row, you hit a full light combo, it'll fully charge your meter. So what you can do if you have stamina is you go in, move around, hit, hit, hit the final hit, which is kind of slow, and then you can release immediately into your big follow-up combo, and you can just do this on repeat. Also, if you're going at a, a monster, a kimono that's moving a lot, you don't have to do the full combo. You can actually hit, wait, roll, move in, hit again. It'll build your meter. The later into the, the chain that you get, uh, the more it'll add to your meter, and then you can release for the big combo. So we've already added a whole bunch of nice uh, flexibility to this weapon because now we can do so much while we're charging. You can hold this down. There's even traits you can unlock in later weapons that allow you to not get knocked down while you're charging, not get knocked down when you're releasing, uh, which makes the weapon feel even better with the later, the later stage weapons as you unlock them and go along. And it's not done there because while you're charging, you can also still use Karakuri. So if you spring forward, you're still charging, you'll do this kind of double hit slash, and then you can keep charging, attack, hit it, release, go back into the hit. You can do the same thing for the box as well. So you can actually go over to a box. If you start your charge and you walk towards a box, you'll still be able to climb it, keep holding the special down, and then you can release, and you'll do this crazy like guillotine chop that releases whatever energy you have. So it gives you this aerial option so you can use your Karakuri. Unlike the mall, where I would recommend you don't really have to use the Karakura all that much, the Nodachi benefits a lot from having this. So you can actually just get a full charge here, go up, climb up on top, and then you can go wop, bah, and do this big damage slot there. So you can charge, move, roll, use Karakuri, and be super flexible, and then you can attack to build meter, you can hold, charge, if you get a chance, stand still, release that, then move towards the target and release and get your big shot in there. So as you get more comfortable holding down the charge, managing your stamina, you get some really nice options. As you face harder and harder kimono, you will find yourself having to be a little bit more loose with this, right? Like you might have to hit, dodge away to dodge something, get behind a big attack, hit again. Maybe you can get a second hit, doesn't fill your meter all the way. 
you have to dodge, then you wait for an opportunity, then you release, and you go back in and hit. But if you're always charging and you get comfortable doing so, you can move about the battlefield just as deftly as any other weapon in the game, and then release your big hits from that as well. You'll also find that if you're having to dodge a lot uh, and move around, you may get to really low stamina. And in this case, like I said, if you have to, uh, your stamina's running low or you're in a bad spot, just release. Because even if you have very low charge in the weapon, you can even start charging here and then release right away for a quick hit. You can then move if you have to, you know, roll over with your attack too, get some distance, charge again, and then go back into it. So that's kind of the basic function of the weapon. I wouldn't say there's any like really major combos other than this one where you start the combo, if you get the opportunity, I would say it's better to just attack to fill than to stand still and fill. Because at least you'll still do damage this way and then you'll be right in position to get the full combo off. So you look at the damage output we got there versus if I stood here and I waited and I waited and I'm not doing damage, and I'm not doing damage, and I'm not doing damage and it's ready and then I attack. Yes, this is super good. It's nice if you hit the target uh, with a in a weak point, but I almost would always recommend just going for the attack, staying on the offensive, getting in the fight, make sure you're charging the whole time, get as many hits as you can, charge as high as you can before you get low on stamina, and if you can, get a full charge, release it, then you can roll, roll out of that, and you can get going, get some stamina back as well. If you're really low on stamina, that's when you can start doing your basic combo, right? You don't, you don't spend stamina when you're doing your regular attacks, which is nice. So if you get down to like red stamina, you don't want to charge again, you're in a spot where you don't want to be low on stamina the whole way, then you can start doing your attacks. But that's how you build up the weapon and that's how you get that combo business in there. And then obviously, if you have the option, you have, you know, you have your extra little bits, you have like your spring box, you can even put a glider down, uh, you can activate, charge, go up in the glider. The glider will remove your charge you can land and do this kind of guillotine slice, which is your off off the top here uh, anyways, right? So you can actually go up here, you can land, and then you can do the same slice here. It does pretty decent damage, and it's very repeatable, which is cool. Um, and you can do the same thing. There's like a, this forward swing. We already looked at this, but you can do this double flip here, which gives you some nice distance. But your biggest damage potential is if you can keep your charge going, fight while charging, and manage that while charging. Uh, get those extra hits there. You can even just roll, get some distance. The higher your stamina gets, the more effective this becomes. And then right before it ends, release, big damage. So you can see that when we started the video, it, it just felt like this really chunky, slow weapon. I've seen so many people pick up this weapon for the first time, and they just do this. They charge, they stand still, they wait, they wait. Oh, it's ready, and then they go attack, and then they release. And that's kind of like the starting point for the weapon, but it has so much more going for it. Uh, you don't, in these kind of games, you don't always get the ability to charge and move with so much flexibility uh, and reasonable like activity with this. So kind of just use that. And you're just managing your stamina, looking at your bar and releasing. And once you get more comfortable with that, this weapon hits like a truck. It has high stagger, hard, high part break. If you get a nice release on this, you actually will break off parts very easily. And you'll actually, you know, do some part damage, some destruction damage. Really nice. So it's an excellent weapon. I think you made the right choice if this is the weapon you're looking for. So there you go. If you found value in this video, uh, leave a like down below. It helps me out tremendously. And if you have any questions or comments for me, you'll find me live every day on twitch.tv forward slash drybear. Come by and say howdy. If you enjoyed yourself today, leave a like down below. You can support me and my work on Patreon and view Patreon exclusive content. Link in the description. Thank you so much for tuning in, and I'll see you in the next one.